Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be doing number 15 in my ongoing series of videos about how to draw animals. Uh, today I've decided to draw a hamster. People like to know the size that I'm working at, so I've put this box in place here. It is four inches on all sides. That works out to around 10 centimeters, and then I just put a line right down the middle. Let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get into drawing some basic guidelines for the head. So you can see it's basically a circle, maybe a little bit uh, oval-like from top to bottom. I've made the top of the head flat uh, based on the photographs that I studied, uh, the top of the head being very flat. This area down here maybe not so important because it's going to get erased away later on, but definitely the sides of the head very rounded. Let's go ahead and draw the ears. So uh, the ears, the shape of the ears is going to be refined a little bit later on, but for now I think it's enough just to cut a couple of curved lines in here. Note how this one touches the box over on this side, this one touching the box at the top. And of course the circle of the head lining up with that, uh, the sort of crosshair lines that we had at the beginning. I think it's time to draw, uh, let's do both the eyes and the nose at the same time. So the head is turned a little bit in a, a three-quarter point of view, and so you have both of the eyes uh, shifted off a little bit to the left here. And um, pretty close to circles, but again, kind of an oval um, shape to it. Uh, now the nose is very unusual, and this is kind of just a placeholder, this circle here. We're going to get into the details of that later on, but I would pay attention to the space between the eyes. Um, look at these blank spaces here between these different lines, and also from the top to the bottom to make sure that you get those placed right. And uh, now I think it's time to draw the lines of the mouth. Now I said the lines of the mouth, but in a way this is the line uh, of the whole uh, snoutal region, as I call it, this whole area of the, uh, the bridge of the nose as it protrudes uh, from the face. This to me looks like the number three tilted on its side. Uh, and uh, it also lines up pretty nicely with that um, crosshair line, the horizontal one. And then just sort of pay attention to the proportions between this lower part, the lower jaw, and the width. I would say it's about half. Uh, the size of it. Now it's time to draw, well we're not going to draw the whole body at once, we're going to draw the four, four body, <laughs> does that make sense? The forefront, the frontal part of the body first, uh, and I may just go straight on to drawing the uh, two front legs. So here you see the front part of the body, again, a, a circle, I mean the whole body is really composed mainly of circles because they're just little fluff balls aren't they, these hamsters? And that's part of what makes them so gosh darn adorable. Um, but uh, what I've done is I've allowed this line to kind of continue down here to become uh, one of the two legs, which is um, stretched out a little uh, closer to us than the other one, touching that bottom line uh, of the box. And uh, then basically, you know, this is going to get refined into the cute little fingers and so forth. Uh, of the paw, uh, but for now just a very wide oval I think will do the job, and I think we're very nearly done. We just have to do the back part, uh, the little hamster tush, let's just call it, and uh, we'll see the legs also just a little bit back there. All right, so that's basically it. You see this curving line kind of takes care of the whole uh, back half of the hamster. You see a little bit of the rear paw poking out from underneath, and I just put a hint of it back here. So just so it doesn't look like a three-legged hamster. Uh, and then I'm going to refocus the camera now so we can zoom in on the head and do a lot of real-time drawing uh, as we begin to get into the details. All right, well, let's go ahead and begin with the ears uh, here. As I said, uh, the shape needs to be refined just a little bit. It's not quite as simple uh, as it uh, was in those basic guidelines. I see in a lot of photos that there's kind of a little indentation here. It sort of splits into two uh, parts before curving back uh, and maybe flattening just a little bit at the end there. So you end up with a slightly more refined uh, shape there. And then I'm going to put a secondary line here that's sort of the upper edge uh, of the ear. I'm going to repeat that same thing uh, over here. Just uh, flattening it just a little touch. Just a titchy touch of a touch. <laughs> a titchy touch of a touch? Really, what's gotten into you. Um, erasing away just a little here again to sort of indicate that um, it splits into these two curving shapes there. And then also get that extra line there at the top. 
Um, the fur is, of course, going to become quite a big thing, but I think I'll go ahead and uh, do the eyes. I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little uh, highlight on the upper left of each eye, and uh, quickly just sort of shade in here. Uh, of course, the those black shiny <laughs> eyes are a big part of what makes uh, hamsters so cute. We used to have a hamster named Schnookerdoodle. <laughs> What a name. Schnookerdoodle. And uh, unfortunately, they don't live very long, do they, hamsters? So that was some years ago that we lost Schnookerdoodle. But now we have a pet corgi. And so, yeah, I'm just sort of darkening all this in. And I will be coming back in with my trusty black Prismacolor to make this even uh, darker. But for now, let's move on to drawing the nose. Now, as I said, the nose is quite an unusual thing, and the, the more you look at it when you study the photos, the sort of more weird and alien it looks. But I'm going to do my best to uh, replicate this. So I'm going to put a line up the middle, and then um, it's sort of, you know, the nostrils come very close to connecting in the middle. I hope this is showing up. And then there's just a secondary uh, contour down here that's so defined, it's like the, the nose sort of uh, protrudes from the face that it almost sort of repeats those two lines. And the whole thing almost splits into four different parts. Now, instead of being um, black like a dog's nose is, it, uh, most of the ones that I studied in the photos were just sort of a pinkish uh, kind of color. Uh, so I'll go ahead and maybe just put a little light indication of shade there. But yes, they, uh, quite an unusual nose uh, after you start studying it. And now maybe we should go ahead and get into the fur. Now when I do the fur, and I'm going to you know, have to do some time lapse later on, I always like to focus on the direction of the fur first. Uh, and in almost all uh, animals, mammals, the uh, uh, hair starts going you know, sort of grows out from the nose and goes uh, vertically up uh, the nose towards the top of the head. And you'll see this in lots of different animals. You know, and, uh, like I said, this is number 15 in my uh, series of videos, and I've done a wolf, I've done uh, lion, tiger, cats, uh, all kinds of animals. And I, you see again and again this pattern of the fur, the direction of the fur going straight up uh, the nose uh, up the nose. <laughs> the fur went up my nose! Uh, the f is growing in this vertical direction along the uh, bridge of the nose, I guess you'd say, before it begins to sort of split to the left and the right above uh, the eyes. And this area here that I had initially drawn as a circle I think also is going to have to be uh, refined quite a bit because the fur, I suppose, depending on the breed of the hamster, but uh, in most of the ones I study, the fur is growing out quite a bit in front of the ears. They aren't ear hairs, okay? It's just fur in front of the ears. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Again, sort of beginning to point out to the left. And what you're going to have to do um, in order to sort of uh, get the hair into the drawing is darken in. I mean, the ears are fairly dark, like a, almost black. Um, but you have to start darkening in and then leaving uh, gaps here. See what I'm doing? To, to indicate the existence of the uh, hairs right there at the top of the head. So just sort of shading in. And again, I expect I'll be darkening in more with my trusty black Prismacolor, black colored pencil later on, and doing the same thing over here. And if you just um, pay attention to not go too far and sort of preserve some of the fur that you had drawn there before, this darkness will make that sort of pop out and read as uh, the fur that we want to see it as coming in front of the ears. And this uh, line down here for the nose that I drew is uh, fairly exaggerated in terms of the clarity. Uh, this is an area of the hamster, uh, hamster's head 
where there is fur, but uh, it seems to me the fur is not quite as shaggy as it is toward the top of the head. So I'm kind of turning this into uh, small zigzagging lines uh, to indicate the fur. Now they're, again, different breeds, different colors. I'm going to try to go for the one that reminds me of the hamster we used to have. Good old schnookerdoodle. Rest in peace. Uh, and uh, you will see a pattern for that type of hamster where the top of the head is uh, brown. I mean, of course, I'm using a, a graphite pencil, so it's going to be gray in this illustration. But um, as it comes down here to the mouth, the area of brown stops and it becomes uh, white. The lower part of the head becomes white. And I'm going to be devoting a considerable amount of time, I'm sure, as this drawing goes on to uh, maintaining these uh, two different regions of the sort of the brown upper area of the head and the white uh, lower area of the head. And this patterning also seems to be, you seem to see in a lot of animals uh, the sort of uh, white hair underneath going down to the belly. You know, even certain breeds of dog, it seems, have that same kind of patterning with the darker fur at the top. This one is, uh, you know, the head is pointing away from us. And so you're not going to necessarily see that white uh, fur pattern over here on this side. But I definitely want to start to get the sort of shagginess of the uh, fur instead of that simple white line, or white line? No, that simple <laughs> graphite pencil line that I had there. Uh, and you see me sort of making it zigzag back and forth. To me it reminds me, the sort of pattern of the fur reminds me of like uh, the spokes of a bicycle tire or something. They all spreading out uh, and pointing out towards the edge of the circle. So that if you're ever, uh, you know, wondering where, you know, where should I, what direction should these lines go in, just remember that sort of idea of the spokes of a uh, tire that as you come down here towards the lower section that fur is going to start to you know it reaches a horizontal point and then it begins to point down like so and definitely over here as I said you know I made this line it's almost like a, a placeholder line and I'm going to go ahead and also erase the guidelines we're just having an erase fest here today it's a race fest 2018 for all you erasing enthusiasts and uh, get rid of all those lines and then this really especially as the it begins to head down towards the body it, it, it kind of fuses together frankly and you don't really see you know a cartoonist might draw that complete line but in a realistic drawing of a hamster you know the whole body is a kind of an amorphous ball of fur and so that's what I'm doing there and that may get us uh, close to everything I needed to teach about the um, the head and let's go ahead and refocus the camera now and start getting into the body and the feet of course now that I say I'm done with the head I realize that I'm not really done with the head because I haven't drawn this lower part of the uh, mouth the lower jaw and there is this sort of area of darkness uh, where there is no fur uh, coming in towards the uh, the mouth and there is a sort of a light indication of a line the sort of cleft palate I guess you'd call it, and, and um, this whole area in here I sort of neglected to uh, shade as fully as it should be. But yeah, making sure that I leave the edges uh, white, the lower edges. All right, and now maybe we can get into uh, drawing the rest of the body. Again, <clears throat> very important to stay focused on the direction of the fur, and I think really you get a sort of repetition of that idea of the uh, spokes of the tire all around this circle of the, of the front of the body. And so that, I'm going to lighten up all these lines. Lighten up, Crowley. Come on, man. <laughs> that is a terrible joke, and I think I've made it before. <laughs> Curly, you've made all of these jokes before. Don't kid yourself. Um, but these lines uh, here definitely are going to get considerably more furry than uh, the lines of the head. So I'm just going in. I'm kind of keeping my pencil a little low to the uh, surface of the paper, exposing more of the lead, and uh, thereby getting, instead of a super fine 
uh, crisp line, getting a little more of a, a blurry uh, graphite line that I think is going to help to convey that fuzziness, you know, that, that soft fur fuzziness of the uh, hamster that we all know and love. But this is going to be another area where there is a kind of patterning between brown and white uh, fur, at least in some breeds. And as I continue going up like so, uh, I can maybe just go ahead and do some quick shading here to show. Uh, what I saw was uh, the, the brown kind of coming across the top, across the shoulders, let's say and then following along um, toward the leg. So you get this sort of um, swoop of brown that's coming down across from the back to the front of the leg toward the, you know, the paw. And then over here we want to repeat that same thing. Of course the, the body is tilted away from us so it's not quite as uh, we're not seeing quite so much of it. But you can see how keeping the pencil low to the page does help with creating this sort of blurry uh, toning, which I think is very helpful when you're uh, drawing a super furry creature like a hamster. Uh, I do want to get some, some indication of the direction of the fur. But I'm not going to get into individual lines here. I'm kind of doing zigzaggy uh, lines that help convey that uh, the presence of the fur without going line by line. Who wants to go? Do you really want to go line by line <laughs> when drawing a hamster? Who has that kind of time? Uh, so I am. I'm just getting a little suggestions of the fur. Uh, but I, again, I'm in time lapse later on, I probably will be refining this quite a lot. But let's go ahead and start getting into drawing the uh, <coughs> paws, which I was surprised look, um, you know, surprisingly human-like to me in terms of the, these individual fingers. That's certainly not like a cat's paw, where um, you don't really see anything that you would refer to as a finger. I feel like when you look at the uh, hamsters, they really do. Each one of these parts of the paw sort of split um, one from the other in a way that really does re remind me of human fingers. We are more closely related than we care to admit, perhaps. Um, So having got that in place, I'm going to go over here and get, uh, I'm putting in sort of areas of darkness just to divide this uh, oval that I'd put into place into these individual finger-like appendages. Is that the right word? No, it never is, Crilly. It never is. We're used to it now. Um, and these, uh, if we were doing full color, these would end up being kind of pink. And I suppose this whole area in here, <clears throat> though it's meant to represent white fur, you don't want to just leave the entire uh, blank white of the page. I think you still have to get some texture in there to suggest the presence of fur. Uh, I'm going to confine that more to the bottom uh, regions than to the top. And back here, we are going to still continue this patterning of the uh, sort of brown upper part of the uh, hamster and the whitish lower belly part. And again, I think I need to sort of lighten up this line here so as to replace it with um, furrier looking uh, lines. Now what I'm going to do over here is introduce a sort of darker toning area to, to help push this whole area back. See how I'm doing that, and by making this a little darker than the this front sort of shoulder area, if we can call it that, uh, is going to pop forward by way of contrast. And uh, just yeah, so getting maybe just a little bit of zigzaggy lines here, 
drawing fur is a hugely time-consuming process, and I'm trying in a way to to do a lot of this real time, but I'm gonna, I know I'm going to have to kick it into time lapse. Bring in old man time lapse to save me once again. <laughs> I always do. You could never do one of these videos without me. Why don't you admit it? Uh, and so this uh, this is going to get refined quite a lot in uh, time lapse, but I hope you'll be pleased with the. Uh, real time, the the level of real time drawing that was done in this video. Um, this back paw again is very similar to the front ones. My approach is to just sort of drop in these darker areas to to sort of separate each one of the finger like parts. So you sort of see me doing that quite quickly. Actually, I don't think you have to get too uptight about the details here. And that maybe brings us toward the end of our real-time drawing session. I am going to kick it into time-lapse and uh, try to get the fur a little more um, furry. <laughs> I am so articulate today. I'm going to get the fur a little more furry and then uh, we're going to come back and have a few final words. I thought that I was done, but then I remembered there was one crucial final detail that I had left out, and that is the whiskers. It's like the hamster equivalent of don't forget the blushies. Don't forget the whiskers. And I'm going to take the easy way out, I must confess. Some breeds uh, seem to have white whiskers, which is a very difficult thing to illustrate. I did see at least one photo with uh, black whiskers, and you know what? That's what I'm going to go for because it's uh, so much easier to deal with. I'm going to take my graphite pencil and uh, just maybe go for about five maybe uh, whiskers. The, in the photo that I studied, they were uh, confined mainly to this upper area, uh, kind of going vertically uh, up and maybe just a little out to the side but not too much beyond that. Maybe a few light ones that go down. And I always feel like when it's so evenly spaced like that, that there's something sort of unnatural. So I want to get at least one that sort of crosses over one of the other ones. It just sort of makes it a little more natural looking to me. Uh, and then, of course, I have to go over here and do the same thing on the other side. This is kind of, you know, it's tricky. You kind of do have to wait until the end, and you've done all this work, and you get a little nervous because you're having to put a fairly dark line uh, straight across, and you get a little nervous. Like, that one was maybe a little too straight, frankly, but uh, maybe I can do a curving one. And uh, camouflage what I got wrong on that one. It is a tricky thing to do, adding whiskers at the end. And uh, frankly, because I'm not uh, moving the page to go uh, along with the pivot point of my wrist, I may actually cheat a little and erase. Is it cheating to erase? Not during Erase Fest 2018. Uh, erase a little bit over here because some of them got a little out of control. And speaking of getting out of control, I want to make sure that I say thank you to people who got completely out of control and ordered one of my books. Like The Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realistic illustrations, The Drawing Lesson, my graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, manga arts, and of course, finally, my very latest book, Chibi devoted entirely to chibi-style illustrations. This book coming out March 20th. If you order it today, you're definitely going to have it prior to the 20th, I'm pretty sure, and you will have my gratitude if you do that. But let me go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.